So, <coughs> hello everybody. Um, I'm Gregory Clement. Um, I'm uh, embedded um, uh, Linux engineer at Chiller uh, at Bootlin, and um, so where we we have um, embedded Linux expertise. We also do development, training, and so on, and we have a strong focus on uh, open source. And um, I also am an open source contributor, so mainly um, a kernel uh, support for um, the um, uh, Armada uh, SOCs, so the ARM v7 and uh, the ARM v8 uh, SOCs. Uh, the, this kind of SOCs that you can you find in the in the NAS or the this kind of, of product. Uh, and I am also the main co-maintainer of this uh, subsystem. Um, so we are going to speak about um, SD card and EMNC. Um, uh, first, um, this, um, these two uh, have a, um, a common thing that both come from uh, uh, EMNC. Um, and um, with time, they increase uh, their, their bandwidth with a new version, uh, since they, they appear. And now they can reach uh, 400 uh, megabytes uh, in, in theories. And um, they are supported in Linux through the MMC subsystem. So uh, what we are going to see is first to have a presentation of what are the SD card and the EMMC, uh, what is uh, the initial support uh, in Linux, uh, when it happened and uh, how it is supported. And then we are going to f focus on the new uh, spin mode, so uh, how they appear uh, for SD and EMMC, their common point, and uh, we, are, we are going to finish by uh, the state of the support of this new uh, uh, spin mode in Linux. Uh, first, the SD card, so um, the uh, SD stands for Secure Digital, and um, because um, um, the secure was for uh, co uh, copyright content. Uh, it was introduced in, um, at, at the end of the last century. It is a MMC extension, uh, and it was standardized by the SDI Association, which was created uh, one year later. And the original idea was to replace the VHS. As I said, uh, and now people who are going to um, uh, run their movies or, or, um, or also the music, and they are going to use a small uh, uh, card for it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I never see uh, nothing uh, about it, but it was uh, the original idea. And uh, it is also, um, uh, it explains when, when you want to um, download the data sheet, you always have uh, what they call the simplified data sheet because uh, they, uh, they, have, they have extra uh, command for the secure command for all the DRM part, which is not public. And as far as I know, it's not really well uh, used on m in many cases. Um, from the point of view of the, of the hardware, uh, you have uh, mainly a flash chip and then a small microcontroller in, uh, in the card. Um, there is nine pins, uh, so there is a, the clock, the command, um, uh, four pin for the data, uh, then the VDD and VSS one and two. And there is also uh, S SPI compatibility mode. Um, so there, uh, I show the, the equivalence for uh, each, uh, each pin. And initially, uh, the, the clocks for this, uh, for the SD card was uh, 25 uh, megahertz. Um, so now from the point of view of the, of the protocol, um, you have a common and data bit stream, so with a, a, a start bit and stop bit for each uh, token. Um, you have a command and response on the command line, so the command line is dedicated only for uh, this, uh, this kind of exchange. And then the, the four data, data lines are dedicated for the data exchange. Um, so the basic transaction is uh, the host send a uh, command and receive a, a response uh, on this uh, data line, on this uh, command line. And uh, you have also, of, of course, some operations that can have data token uh, when you want, uh, obviously, uh, retrieve some data from your, uh, from your SD card. 
Um, so all the communication are uh, initiated by, uh, by the host and also uh, the data transfer uh, are, are done by block uh, with CRC for, on each block. And when you uh, initiate a multiple data block, uh, then the, um, the card uh, sends them continu continuously and it is the host which will stop it uh, by sending a, a, a command. Um, so compared to uh, uh, MMC, um, in this initial version with MMC, you have uh, only one uh, line for the, for the data, whereas for the SD card, you, you have a four line. Uh, but nowadays, uh, the MMC can go up to, up to uh, eight data lines. Uh, there is no DRM in MMC, and also, with time, the, the common set uh, diverge. Uh, but uh, both uh, SD card and MMC have uh, the SP SPI compatibility mode. Now we are going to see the eMMC. Um, so um, there, the, we are going to present the eMMC, but there is uh, other extension uh, for of uh, MMC, um, uh, which came from um, MMC and GLake, but nowadays. Um, it's mainly the only one that we, we still use. Um, so it stands for Embedded Multimedia Card. And it was first mentioned in um, 2007 uh, in the uh, specific specification uh, 4.1. So here, uh, what you have is a still a flash chip with a microcontroller, but in a, B, a BGA chip that you uh, plug in you know, your sold in your um, solder uh, on your board. Um, <coughs> for the point of view of the, the pin out, you have more, more pines that, uh, for the SD card. You have uh, uh, 14 pines. Uh, the main difference is uh, you have uh, eight, uh, eight pines for the eight line of data. And also, you have more um, uh, uh, power supply. You have a VCQ, uh, VCCQ, uh, VSSQ, VCC, and so on. Um, with version 4.4, um, there was a, a, more, a, a, new, a new pin, which was a reset pin. And then with version 5, uh, we uh, have the data strobe line. We are going to see uh, this uh, uh, later. And uh, since uh, 4.3 version, the MMC uh, have no more the SPA, SPA mode uh, compatibility. And in, in uh, initial release, the clock for the MMC was uh, 52 megahertz. Um, so the BROS protocol is m uh, more or less the same as uh, the, the one used for the SDBus, uh, because both came from MMC. Um, so you still have common and response on common lines, the data on the data lines. Uh, also, the basic transaction, um, everything is uh, more or less the same. Um, from this point of view, the main difference, I think we are going to see, yes, just after. Uh, so, the, the, the difference we, you, you have with the EMMC and MMC card is um, the, um, uh, how it's presented. Is MMC is a, a chip solder to a board, whereas the MMC card is a removable. Um, also, there are some dedicated features for EMMC, uh, such as uh, uh, partitioning, uh, device information. You have some uh, what they call uh, hardware partition, so the directly provided by the EMMC. You have some partition inside uh, your EMMC, and uh, now the EMMC is widely used, whereas uh, the EMMC cards are, are really hard to, to find uh, nowadays. So now we are going to see the, the, the super uh, in uh, Linux and uh, how it uh, came in Linux. So it starts uh, in uh, two, um, 2004 in version 2.6.9. Uh, it was uh, uh, initially uh, done by uh, Russell King. Then, uh, so it was only for the MMC. Then later, uh, Pierre Osman uh, had the SD card support in a two, uh, one, year, one year later in 2005, and uh, he became uh, the MMC maintainer uh, the year after. 
And this same year, with a kernel 2.6.17, uh, um, uh, the SDHCI uh, was added. So it's, um, it's HCI that, like you have for the USB or like something like that, a, 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 um, a control interface that uh, many of uh, vendors uh, implement. And so you have common um, uh, parts uh, for, for them. Um, the high speed mode uh, for MMC uh, was added in 2.6.20 uh, and the high speed mode for the SD card was added uh, also on the same release. And uh, there was also the SDIO extension which was uh, added uh, uh, in 2007. So the SDIO extension is uh, allow you to I use the SD card for I.O., so uh, typically now it's mainly for the Wi-Fi uh, SDIO card, but uh, there was also uh, support for uh, uh, UART, um, GPS, so some SD card uh, which came with, with this, uh, this feature. Um, so the, the code is uh, located in a driver uh, MMC and the, the header is in include Linux uh, MMC. And currently, it is maintained by uh, Hul, uh, Ulf and Son since uh, 2014. And the code is separate in two parts. So you have uh, the core, uh, where you find the protocol used by MMC, EMMC, and SD card. And also, we have, there are some common functions used by the framework itself. And then you have the host part. And here, uh, it's where you have the, um, the support for the controller. So and uh, uh, among them, there is two uh, interesting parts. There is a, a SDHC-based uh, um, uh, uh, driver. So they are all um, in the same place, and they, are, uh, they have a dedicated maintainer for it, which is uh, Adriel Hunter. And uh, if there is also the SP, uh, SPI mode support in, in Linux. Uh, so with the MMC SPI.c uh, file, but which no more have uh, any man maintainer now. Um, so uh, we saw the, the history of uh, MMC and Ezekiel, and uh, so uh, initially uh, they came with a, 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 a clock speed uh, around uh, 25 megahertz, uh, but then. Uh, there, there was a, a first improvement, it was high speed, so mainly it was just to uh, double uh, the, the frequency uh, of, of the clock. So uh, for MMC, uh, we, uh, we switched from 26 to uh, 52 megahertz, and from SD card, we switched from uh, 25 to uh, 50 megahertz. Um, with this one, there was a, a new command which was introduced, uh, the command 6, uh, to uh, hello the host to uh, uh, ask to the card to switch from a mode to another mode. And it was introduced in the version 2 of the SD card and the version, card, version 4 of the MMC. Then uh, there was a, a bigger speed improvement uh, introduced in uh, 2010 with the uh, SD3.01 uh, version in uh, 2010. Uh, so there was uh, a lot of uh, uh, new speed mode. So you have the SDR12 and the SDR25. Uh, we we are have the same bandwidth. That's uh, what we call the um, default speed and high speed. But the main difference is all this new speed uh, means that the, they 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 use 1.8 volt instead of 3.3 volt. Uh, what uh, it was initially uh, for the SD card. And uh, now for the name, the, the, the name are based on the bandwidth, so SDR12 means that the max bandwidth is uh, 12 megabytes and, and so on. So uh, with UHC1, you, you have um, the maximum speed you can have is uh, 104 uh, megabytes. Um, so uh, with this new uh, uh, new speed, there was also a, a new uh, step in the init seconds, uh, the one when you switch uh, uh, switch the voltage, because uh, there's still still legacy support. So first you start with 
uh, low frequency at 3.3 uh, uh, volt, and then uh, there is some exchange with the card to discover what the card support, and then you ask to the card to switch from a, 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 a frequency to another frequency. And for, for the voltage, it is the same. Um, so the difference between this uh, this mode is all the SDR is a simple uh, data rate. So uh, you just uh, uh, send the data on uh, the one front of the clock. Whereas for the DDR50, uh, it's a double uh, date, uh, double data rate. Uh, so the clock is uh, at uh, uh, 50 megahertz, but with double clock and. Um, as we have uh, four lines of data, uh, you can do the math to have the, uh, the bandwidth. Um, yes, yeah, there's something interesting is about um, for the SD, SDR uh, 104. Um, uh, for the, the, this mode, uh, we, you, you need to do some uh, uh, tuning to, to ensure that you won't uh, miss the, the clock and you are, because the, the, the frequency uh, begin to be uh, higher. And so there is a, a dedicated command uh, for this, is the command um, 19. Uh, in the same time, for the EMMC, uh, with the EMMC version 4.4, uh, it was introduced the DDR mode, uh, so uh, instead of running at uh, 26 uh, megahertz, it uh, uh, went until uh, uh, no. The high speed they still use the high speed mode, but the difference is here you have the double double rate. So you use uh, uh, on one clock you use the two front of the clock, and it's allowed to uh, uh, double the bandwidth. Um, and uh, with EMMC, it was still possible to use a 3.3 uh, volt. And um, from the um, uh, host controller point of view, it's exactly the same as the DDR15 uh, for, uh, for the SDK. Because um, maybe I, I didn't uh, tell it, but most of the time, uh, the, uh, this is the same controller know how to handle the SD card and the uh, EMMC and uh, the, the, there is a uh, few difference uh, between them. Uh, another speed improvement with uh, EMMC was uh, the H uh, HAS200, uh, introduced in uh, 2011 and, and uh, in um, two, uh, two, 2011 uh, with MMC 4.5. Uh, so uh, it is a as you see, single rate, single data rate, but uh, this time the frequency uh, goes uh, until 200 megahertz. Um, with this one, there is a, a new command for the MMC, EMMC is a tuning command, and but uh, it's uh, it can use it's not uh, mandatory, but it can use to to find the optimal data sampling. And uh, now this one must be used at uh, either 1.8 uh, volt or 1.2 uh, volts, and no more uh, 3.3 volts. Uh, and finally, uh, the last um, uh, uh, speed which was introduced for EMMC uh, was uh, e um, um, five years ago with EMMC uh, 5.0. Is uh, uh, HS 400, so it is, it's still uh, 200 megahertz, but uh, with dual rate, and it is for this one that the data strobe line uh, had, had been uh, used, uh, had been added on the interface of the EMMC, uh, and so uh, it, it used during uh, data out and CRC uh, response. Um, so here again, you can use uh, the, the command 21 to uh, find the optimal data sampling. So usually you do it during the init seconds of your, of your um, uh, card. Uh, and with later with MMC 5.1, there was the end-to-end strobe. Um, and so here the strobe are also providing during uh, the CMD uh, response. For uh, the SD card part, uh, there was the UHS-2, um, which was introduced later in a f uh, with SD 4.1, but this one is a completely new mode. Uh, you have a new set of signal, 
um, for example, with, so, with all this new set of signal, uh, they are in my first slide. It's uh, actually what what uh, what they have done. They they, they still uh, keep um, the first row uh, of signal to be compatible with uh, the UHS one. But for UHS two, UHS two, you use a, a new set of signal, and uh, these signal are. Um, Okay. Um, so it's two data lane uh, using uh, differential differential signals. So for the point of view of the hardware, it's completely different. Um, and the data uh, is uh, multiple. Uh, uh, there is two two data speed mode. So uh, when you uh, multiply it by 15 or, or by 30, uh, and so. For the point of view, it's, uh, the hardware is different, but also for the protocol point of view, it's completely different. So now you exchange packet uh, message on both ways. Uh, each packet have header and payload data. Uh, it's still possible to uh, reuse uh, the, the SD packet, but actually they are uh, encapsulated uh, inside the um, the new uh, the new protocol, and that means that you still at very low level you still need, need to know um, uh, how to 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 use this new protocol, and then later in with SD6 uh, there is UHS3, uh, but it is uh, for the point for the same protocol it's just the the speed which should be uh, um, uh, improved. And we are going to see later uh, to see how it's supported or not by, by Linux. Uh, but for this new support um, uh, speed, uh, the DDR50 mode was um, added in 2.637. Uh, and uh, then uh, each year we have a, a new new support. And um, so UHS1 is supported, uh, HS200 uh, and 400 also, and even the uh, unanswered strobe is supported. It was uh, added uh, quite recently. And so um, currently also in Linux, uh, we saw that with this new uh, um, mode uh, came the need to, uh, um, to be able to switch the voltage and also to use a new uh, command and also the tuning. So all these uh, requirements uh, have been uh, met in, in Linux. So uh, the signal voltage is um, is supported through the uh, uh, the framework in Core.c, and uh, they use uh, the regulator framework to 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 manage it. And um, the tuning used by EMMC and SD card uh, are also present in the core, and uh, the, you have common function which I use uh, depending uh, of what you, what you want. Um, so there are functions present in the core, but uh, it's a um, high-level function, and but the implementation de really depends on the controller. Uh, so it is done at controller uh, driver level. And uh, also the, the switching se sequence is completely handled uh, by, by the core, but uh, most of the step uh, can be customized for the host controller and uh, it's a good thing because, uh, de depending of uh, the, the hardware, there are some kind of optimization in the hardware which can be done for a controller or another controller. As, and especially for the for the tuning, there are several ways to 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 do it. So you can just introduce what you want uh, at uh, each step. Um, so there are still uh, some some uh, missing parts. Um, because for, for EMMC, the, the support is quite complete, uh, at, at least from the point of view of the, of the speed. Uh, most of the development now uh, as a, are uh, in EMMC. You, you find new things only at driver level when you had a new, a new controller, and, uh, and that's, that's all. Uh, for the SD card, there is no support at all for UHS 2 and, of course, uh, UHS 3. 
And, but actually, adding this uh, new protocol would be a, a, big, uh, a big task because, uh, as I told you, it's a completely different set of uh, protocol and uh, very, uh, a lot of things to, to add on it. Um, besides this, um, when I try to, to look for some controller which uh, can support it, I didn't see any ARM SOC that uh, claim to support uh, UHS uh, 2 or UHS 3. I just find some uh, IP vendor for this, uh, this controller uh, who propose uh, IP capable of doing it, but I didn't see any implementation in, in the SOC. So there is no real intent to, to, to do it in the, in the kernel now. And also there is some ch recent change uh, for the for the SD uh, in uh, June uh, this year, the SDI, SDI released a paper uh, for the presenting the SD Express, uh, which will be the, the next version of the of the SD, so SD uh, 7.0, and they will be ba they will based on uh, PCI Express and NVMe, NVMe. and um, <laughs> also they, they chose to uh, remain compatible to uh, UHS 1, but not, not no more with UHS 2 and UHS 3. Uh, what they do actually, uh, if you remember all the, the, the pine, the, so the, the first row of pine will be used for UHS uh, 1, and the, the differential uh, uh, pines will be used for doing the PCI Express exchange. So with this new um, uh, um, version, uh, there, is also, yeah, there will also be a, a new uh, power supply support with a 1.2 uh, volt. And there is a, a hope uh, that it should be supported um, straightforward in Linux because they really want to just um, leverage on PC Express. And according to the, this uh, white paper, so it's only a few uh, it's 10, 10 pages, so, uh, and, both, and half of the page are marketing parts. But what they show, they really want that uh, the SD card will be directly connected to the PCI Express bus. So then you can just leverage of the PCI uh, Express controller you can find uh, uh, there. And so from this point, it's uh, completely possible to just directly doing NVMe uh, uh, through the, the flash uh, here. So there is some hope that uh, in Linux will also gain off uh, um, uh, for the support for the uh, new speed uh, on um, SD Express. Okay. So, okay. so it's finished. So, if you have any question, come on. Yes. Um, I'm wondering what is the oldest uh, common standard which is still supported by uh, today's devices uh, in both the EMMC and the SD world because we are seeing uh, some uh, passive adapters for example on which you can plug an EMMC chip uh, to convert it to an, uh, a micro SD uh, uh, connector. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. recently, I tried to recover some data from an EMMC chip. I only managed to solder uh, five wires out of those uh, I had to solder. And I expected to recover the data over SPI. But when I'm seeing that uh, apparently it's, been, yes. it's not been, uh, I don't know, maybe mandatory or supported, I don't know, since something like maybe 2008 or something like this, probably even if I managed to solder all the wires, I would have wasted my time. Yes, because um, as I said, the, 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 the command have diverged, and especially for, for, this, for this mode. So um, maybe, uh, maybe it could be possible if you're at the really beginning to, 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 to remain in the, um, the uh, low speed mode, so default speed mode for, uh, for the SD card and uh, uh, default speed mode for the, for the MMC. Maybe it should be possible because of the, this uh, um, slow mode are directly uh, came from MMC, bo both of them. Um, so it, maybe it sh should be possible, uh, but 
And also, as I said, uh, usually the controller, all the controllers that I know uh, uh, can do the both, can do uh, EMMC and SD card. So uh, from them, it's the same thing, and uh, there are a lot of common, common, common things. So, uh, but um, when you speak about um, passive adapter, I'm not sure it will work really well. Oh, oh yes, uh, I, I use some of them on uh, certain boards. Uh, and uh, I checked uh, closely, there is no single component, not even a single resistor. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, I actually have a comment to the EMMC recovery. Uh, there is multiple vol voltage rails on the EMMC chip, so if uh, they are not all wired correctly, it's probably not going to work. Mm, okay. So if you just soldered five wires, that's probably what, command, data, uh, something else. And then one voltage rail and ground, and then that's not enough because you. I, I, I needed more. It's just that it was too difficult because uh, there was a half a millimeter pitch, and uh, okay. I did not manage to have enough room just for the soldering iron tip. Yeah, that, that's all I want to say. So um, I was wondering how how do you debug those high speed modes? Do you have like a a logic analyzer that that could capture at 200 megahertz. I'm not sure it exists. How do you know uh, the hardware works well? well? Because you're developing drivers or core drivers. I don't know. Yes, yes I, I actually um, maybe I was lucky because uh, when I developed uh, the driver, it 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 works. It was a um, I, I, at least the, um, the the hardware itself was working then. It was more matter to using the correct uh, IPI and be sure of the sequence and, uh, and all of this. Um, but uh, what you're speaking about is more for the, the, the designer of the, of the IP, and it's, uh, it's more for uh, um, um, set up the hardware itself that doing the, 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 the driver. But for, the, for all these kind of things, I think there are some uh, analyzer which, uh, which ex exist. Uh, I speed an analyzer for, for this kind of, uh, of issue. But fortunately, we, I don't have this problem. So you've never had uh, any issue? <laughs> no, not a not yeah. very hardware problem. It's okay. more uh, at a protocol level or something like that. And there is a lot of things because um, a big part of the, of the uh, driver and the framework is uh, dealing with Quirk because there is a lot of um, um, controller who claim that it supports things but actually they don't so you have to modify it and uh, to do it in a different way so there is a lot of Quirk but it's more uh, still at logical level uh, or sometimes this Quirk is just because there is a problem at other level and so you say okay uh, I was supposed to support this speed but actually uh, I won't. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much. A quick question. It feels like on the simple question. On the marketing side, we're starting to see branding around like application performance classifications, A1, A2, and a lot of the camera vendors are promoting. Yes. Is there any technical ground to this, or it's just based on performance verification of the cards themselves beyond UH2, UHS2, 3, etc.? I think it's just... Uh, I think for, for achieving this this performance, they, for, for sure they they have to designing their microcontroller and to designing their uh, non for it. But then uh, how they are certifi certified by this is just uh, some tests they done, and if they manage to uh, achieve the minimum bandwidth uh, declared by this mode, uh, it's okay for them. There are no they ju uh, what what they just should um, comply is the minimum speed and uh, in reading or writing, but there is no um, a mandatory part that exists and they have to, to use. Okay, I have one more. Uh, could you speak a little bit more about the HS200 and HS400 up tuning? I mean, when you go from the default EMMC modes, you have to do some sort of tuning to enter the HS200, right? And after that, do you do any sort of tuning uh, when you enter the HS400, or do you just flip on the DDR mode and that's it, and you just hope it will be tuned correctly? Uh, I, from from my, my experience, I think we directly 
We, we don't uh, pass all the mode, actually. It's, it's quite the opposite at the beginning. We try the high, higher mode mm -hmm. directly, so there is some tuning, and then if it fails, you try the, the lower mode uh, and so on. If the first, no, the first thing is you, you're, you're exchange with the car to know, or the EMC to know its capabilities, and you try to, to go to the higher uh, um, declared capabilities, and so here you have just one tuning. Uh, sometimes there is some retuning, re uh, some, some command for it, but it's just in the init seconds. And uh, um, for it's actually from what I saw, it's just it's the same tuning function which is used for all the mode uh, with different parameter, but it's the same same thing. Yeah, but the thing is, you cannot enter HS four hundred right away. It's not possible. You have to enter HS 200, then verify that the card is actually communicating with you and there is no problem with that communication. And only then you can turn on or enter the HS 400. Uh, maybe we can take it after the talk. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, uh, you're supposed to perform the tuning in HS 200 and then switch to HS 400 afterward. And you can perform another. Okay. Okay. Uh, whatever. So you you can perform another phase of tuning. I think there is a callback for that in the framework uh, yes. when you're switching from HS200 to HS400. But the tuning itself, which is usually a phase tuning of some sort, is supposed to happen in HS200. Right. And we do it only for HS200. Now you're out of mic. <laughs> Do we do the tuning only for the HS 203 or do we do it for both HS 200 and HS 400 in Linux? Uh, I think in Linux you're, you're supposed to do it only when you're switching to HS 200. And, 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 and then, then, you then there is another callback where you can do something else. Maybe okay. you can redo the same thing. Gotcha. So we basically then, then hope that the tuning was okay for the HS 200. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I have the same problem as you. I'm not so sure it, it works that way. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks. Uh, it's maybe related to the two previous points. As a user, how do I do I have a, a return from the kernel to, to tell me that my card is running at a proper speed regarding what it's supposed to be? I mean, I'm buying a card that is said to be that performance. How do I know if I'm entering the proper state of uh, performance? What you could know is uh, if you're, you can, from the debug FS, you can know at which mode you are running. So if you are UHS-1, if you are in SDR-104, uh, and you can know, know this. But of course, you, you, you just know what the, the maximum speed uh, you can be used with this card because it's in, in this mode, but then even if, for, for example, you can uh, support uh, SDR uh, 104, then you have also to have the flash inside uh, the SD card, which will be uh, speed enough to to, uh, to, the, to the data. The, actually, the two, two things. When you, you all the, the mode, the spin mode, is the maximum bandwidth, which can be used on the wire, but then it will depend on the, the, the mass storage inside. I was just wondering if, if there is a, a kind of print case just reporting to the user, here comes the current speed of the negotiation. Like, yes. Like uh, for the set, as that I is saying, yes. I'm running at 6 gigabits. For, so for, for sure, uh, in DebugFS, in, um, um, you, you have uh, the IO uh, MMC, uh, you go to DebugFS MMC and then you have a IO's uh, file and then you have a lot of information, you have also the voltage which is used and, and so on. Uh, so you have this information, and in, in, the, the, in the print, I'm not sure if there are a print card for, for it. May, maybe in the log you can find it, but for sure with DebugFS you have all this information. You have uh, uh, if we have also what uh, the uh, what the SD uh, card support and what it is a current mode. So we can also compare those. Thank you. Well, then I have another one. Um, did you ever look into the EMMC background operations? And if so, is there something similar like that on the SD card side? The, the, SD, uh, the EMMC what? The background operations. 
back one question. Uh, which is something which the controller does to clean up the internal NAND and make sure that the NAND is in good order. It's called BKOps. So in you, the you speak about the ex extra commands that you exchange with. A oh no no no! There, there's something in the XCSD which is called the BKOps, and it's usually triggered automatically by the EMMC. Yes. Uh, but you can force it using the MMC command from Linux. There's like MMC. Yes, there, there is less, uh, uh, very less uh, things you can do with SD compared with MMC. With MMC, right. uh, there is a lot of things which specified, and uh, you, uh, the AMMC can expose a lot of information, yep. uh, and you don't have any of this information for SD card. Usually right. it's completely secret and you don't know what to, what to do and you okay. don't have even the geometry of the dand or uh, whatever. Yeah, basically my question is, is there something on the SD, SAR, SD side which would allow you to verify that the data in the NAND on the SD card are in a no. good shape and the integrity of them no, is okay? No, there is nothing about it. Okay, gotcha, thanks. No. I think we had a, a good talk of David a long time ago at Canal Recipe saying that we should not trust these beasts and because we don't know what is running inside. In fact, there is some software, there is a file system even inside it. And so David made a brilliant presentation about that. So don't trust them because it's a black box. Is that the same with SSD? Sure. So Gregory, we'll put you on the spot. What SD cards should we be buying to use on our boards? Uh, I can't tell you. And it's very complicated. For SD cards, you can't have any information. It's a, and, it's a, and also, the, uh, the only thing you have is when, the, for example, they said we support A1, so mm -hmm. you can trust that the minimum of this. But you won't have any information of uh, the number of cycles you will be able to use. Uh, for EMMC, at the time I know, at the time <laughs> I know they, they, they provided more information about uh, what you can find, and some, and, and uh, also at, maybe it's not always the case, but at the time they also uh, can enga en engage uh, to say, okay, uh, you, uh, we, uh, this EMMC will support uh, uh, 1,000 uh, cycle or something like that. So with EMMC, you can. It's possible to have more information because also the, 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 at this time they targeted more the industrial market that the SD card will they never target this one. But uh, it seems it's harder even for EMMC now to find this kind of information. And, and the worst is uh, even if you find um, a good uh, EMMC, you say, okay, this, this one is perfect. Uh, then they can change the microcontroller, they can change the SD card, and they still use the same brand, and so you, you, you can't know. We, we, it's so bad for us, we, about a year and a half ago, we started making our own. We spec them, and we get them produced in Shenzhen by a couple of people we trust. Yeah. So we, and we brand them, and we give them away. So if you guys want SD cards, we have collaborate SD cards, because we know what's in them. Uh. <laughs> So you have the source code of the firmware running inside the SD card? I wish. Uh, we, uh, you know what, this one we could probably ask. So, no, but we don't. We don't care. <laughs> so you don't know. <laughs> the price point was more important. <laughs> but you can get it pretty far down. They're not certified, of course, because we asked. And when we saw the bill to get a one certification, we we're like, no, thank you. <laughs> I think it, it, it starts at $75,000. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.